Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and here with another installment of Lion Reviews. Today's review is going to be on the show Lucifer. Before we get into the actual review, let's go into a few of the details behind the show itself. A few of the people who star in this are Tom Ellis, Lauren German, Kevin Alejandro, D.B. Woodside, Leslie Ann Brandt, Amy Garcia and Rachel Harris. In the show itself essentially is about Lucifer, obviously, the devil, um, wanting to gee up hell. He just decides, right, I've gave up with hell, I just want to live my life, make my own choices. And he moves to LA and ends up teaming up with the police and starts solving crimes. Through solving crimes he has a lot to deal with, be it come to angels and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in this show. Uh, let's actually get into some of the things that I really like about it. Well, to start off, um, this is one of my all-time favourite shows. The whole reason it wasn't on my top 10 TV show list was because I hadn't actually seen it by that point. Uh, when I actually got to watch it, they'd already done the three seasons and I, I just, just decided to binge watch it and I absolutely fell in love with the show. Tom Ellis is absolutely fantastic at playing Lucifer and I love the fact that it's a different spin on Lucifer because whenever we see the devil put into shows and things like that it's always like he's the big bad or he's like good for some of you and then he's just tricking you and it turns out he's the big bad. Uh, so it's, it's nice to see a show run with the fact that maybe he's not bad, maybe he just wants to make his own choices throughout life. One of the big things that I love that is revealed in Season 3, so I should mention there's a lot of spoilers to come here, uh, but one of the things that I love is the fact that his devil face, the you know the evil red face and that, it all comes down to him. I like that fact that it plays on, because I believe I'm bad, that, that's the way I look. Because you get to see it disappear for a while and it's because he believes that he's truly good now. So, aye, showing on the outside how you feel on the inside, it's, it's a nice little play into the story. And it's not even like they just throw that in there, just, you know, just chucked it in nice and sneakily or whatever. They actually went with a full-on storyline with it and didn't even reveal that that was the storyline until later on in the series. It was, it's just a brilliant way to circulate the full, it's a great way to circulate the whole how we feel can make us who we are. If, if you catch my drift there, uh, I'm, I'm probably doing a bad, bad description of it. But that's that's the way it all comes out in my head. I like the fact that in this, you've got uh, bad guys from all walks of life. First, Amenadiel is sort of the bad guy. Uh, that's Lucifer's brother, another angel. I like the fact that he's sort of a bad guy. Not really, but he is in the storyline. I always hate describing those because you know for a fact that they're no the bad guy but in this circumstance they've got to be the bad guy so you don't know which way to word it. That's basically what I'm doing here. And then you've got Lucifer's mother. That was that was a fantastic storyline. Uh, Lucifer's mother's been caged in hell and she escapes from hell and all she wants is a family. Maybe she doesn't go about it in the right way but all she wants is a family. I, I like that. The big bad doesn't have to have just this menacing, terrible reason for doing what they're doing. They, they can have this reason that just, it makes sense to you. All she wants is to be able to see her children again. Fair enough. But for it, you're meant to, I, I, don't, I don't even know if you're meant to hate her. I, I think that's another great thing about the show because it leaves you wondering how you're meant to feel. She's the big bad in this situation, yet you don't know if you're meant to hate her or meant to love her. One of the big ones for me was Kane, played by Tom Welling, of all people. You know, Smallville. Now, uh, for me, this at first, it started to fall flat. Like, Tom Welling's place in this, mm, it didn't really... It didn't really fit for me, playing Pierce. At first, like, it was just at first. But when it came to the whole revelation and they started to actually build a full-on storyline from it, uh, it felt really good. I mean, even the Cinnamon stuff, I wasn't too keen on at first. Big, 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 big spoiler. When we find out that Pierce is Cinnamon, uh, 
it snowballs into this huge massive storyline which just felt great. And obviously it ended up leading to one of the biggest things on the show but we'll get to that. I feel like they built the right relationships around this as well, uh, especially with Mazikeen played by uh, Leslie Ann Brandt. Mazikeen's whole storyline has been the most interesting for her. Uh, being like she's a demon and the whole growth from just hating humans like completely uh, and just hating everything about her. Well, actually she doesn't hate everything about her. She loves the party and she loves sex. She loves it like that. But you, you ca catch what I'm saying here. Um, but basically the whole story of her going from that to finding Trixie and building a real relationship with this little girl who everybody seems to love. Like every single person in this loves Trixie. And then gone from that and a building the relationship with uh, Amenadiel to having everything start to crumble apart, uh, our friendship with uh, Linda. Mazikeen's story, trust me, if, if you're going to watch it for anybody's story, Mazikeen is the one that you really want to keep an eye on. All of the storyline arcs and everything have felt really, really, really good in this. So I can't really fault any of the storyline arcs. Maybe the whole development with Pierce felt a little bit slow and a little bit meh at times, but it ended up tying into something brilliant. So again, that, that that's really the only fault where it was a little bit meh at first. But the show's been playing for strength to strength to strength. And obviously now we're about to enter season four. Uh, and going back to what I say is like I only found it after they'd already done season three. The big problem with that was uh, it being cancelled by Fox, and I was in this little abridged time between after it had been cancelled and before it had been picked up again by Netflix. So I, I, I was in one of the places where I was like, "Damn it! I've found a show that I absolutely love, and I've found it at a time where it's just going to be gone." But no, when I found out Netflix had picked up, I was over the moon. And the truth is, the story, for what we've seen of the little trailers and that for Netflix, it looks like season four is going to be the best season yet. So now is the perfect time to actually get into the show. I mean, you've only got a couple of days until season four actually starts on Netflix, which is unfortunate. But if you push it back a little and just go back and catch up on season one to three, honestly, you will not regret it. The show is fucking brilliant and it just plays from strength to strength to strength. I have no idea why Fox wanted to cancel it. The worst part is they cut off at a really, really pivotal time. Like, um, big, big spoiler coming. Biggest spoiler I could ever give. So this comes at a time where uh, Chloe had just seen Lucifer's actual face. And this is the whole thing that we'd been building towards. This is what we'd been looking for. And then to find out that the show's going to be cancelled after she's just had the big reveal. Oh my god, he's actually Lucifer. It's like, why do shows want to keep doing this to us? Well, no shows, it's networks. Why do networks keep wanting to build it up, build it up, build it up to the pivotal moment and then go, no, we're not getting you anymore, we've cancelled your full fucking show. Oh, it's, it's a bastard. I'm just thankful that Netflix actually picked it up and they've probably made one of the best investments they can make because Lucifer is actually so fucking popular and I'm guessing it's just going to get more and more and more popular due to the fact that it's moving over to Netflix which has an, a massive fucking following. I think it's one of the top, uh, it probably is the top uh, like TV show subscription service. So I... Uh, this show's about to boom again. But as for the actual rating of this, now the rating that I'm actually going to give this is Raised From Perdition. The reason I give it that is because the whole concept of the show, for me in my mind, it f the concept just looked a bit naff. It just looked kind of stupid, kind of silly, and didn't it appear to be something that would work for me. But the truth is, after I gave it a chance, I was fucking hooked. I absolutely love this show and 
It is probably one of my number one recommendations for anybody who hasn't seen it. Lucifer is fantastic. Season 4 is coming up 100%. Get into it now. So there we go. There's another review done. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to tune in to the next one. Or else I will sentence you to an eternity in hell. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to butt fuck that like button.